Last week, I had to force myself to play Zenith. I'm not trying to say that to be ungrateful or to complain, but Zenith, as good as it is, just isn't the game I was hoping for. Leading up to the alpha, I really started to crave some good medieval fantasy style gaming, and I played the Blade and Sorcery in preparation for that. Then Zenith came out, I tried it for a few hours, got off, and then never wanted to go back. And then, after that, Demio, an amazing tabletop RPG, came out, and halfway through the week, I just started playing nothing but that, and the game really satisfied my fantasy itch, making it even harder to want to go back to Zenith. So what's so bad about Zenith? Well, it's actually a really potentially good game. It is a beautiful looking MMORPG with the Japanese SAO type aesthetic. And if you're a fan of MMOs, you'll definitely like this. And the combat is fairly fun at first, but like all MMOs, it can feel a little bit repetitive after a while, which is fine if you're a casual gamer that wants to sit down and relax while they play. Again, if you already like MMOs, you'll really love Zenith, I think, and actually Matteo311 had a fantastic video comparing Zenith to traditional MMOs that I'll link to in the description that you should definitely check out to get a better comparison. Because I'm not a big MMO player, I played RuneScape back in the day, but otherwise I can't really say much about the genre, so I'll leave all that to Matteo. Instead, I'll be looking at Zenith from the eyes of a VR connoisseur and a fan of anime and the Japanese aesthetic. And while the game is beautiful, it has better MMO mechanics than most other VR MMOs right now, and it has the potential to be so much more, I still have really mixed feelings about Zenith. After initially playing the game, I was confused. I was confused because I didn't know what kind of game it was. The game was trying to be everything, and then it failed to be good at any one thing. I'm not talking about game mechanics, by the way, but I'm, I'm talking about the style and the aesthetic of the world that we're in. It's a beautiful world, and the soundtrack is amazing at immersing you into it, but it jumps so many different genres that I kind of don't know what kind of game it is. I was expecting a Japanese fantasy-style game with maybe a little bit of futuristic tech, kind of like what you'd expect in like a Final Fantasy game, but but, you know, mostly, ultimately, I was hoping for more of a fantasy game, more like Sword Art Online. But instead, we didn't get that, we got something else. When you launch the game, you load up into a futuristic Japanese sci-fi world, and it is really cool and beautiful. The city of Zenith looks amazing, it's got that Japanese aesthetic that I love, and you can explore the city untethered because of the ability to climb and fly around which I'll talk more about later in this video. Then you leave the city, and you can go to all kinds of places. You go to some plains where you fight some monsters and run into some village ruins, and then you go into a mine shaft that seems like a mix of a mine shaft and an evil laboratory for some reason. Then you can go into forests where you finally start to get that fantasy RPG type vibe, and then you can go to the beach and suddenly you're a pirate on a pirate ship. And the whole time you're running around exploring, don't forget to take a look at yourself and realize that you look like a ridiculous fairy. And this is probably my biggest complaint with the game. Outside of the obvious bugs and things that you would expect in the alpha, I'm just confused about what kind of world we are in. Maybe this criticism is a bit too harsh because maybe I was just hoping for a focused fantasy style game like Sword Art Online, where you can meet up with friends in taverns or go out and fight goblins, and, and maybe that's not what Zenith is trying to be. But even then, I still could get behind the wild mix of genres if it wasn't for the fairy wings. They literally decided to put sci-fi looking fairy wings on the backs of all the characters and I hate it. I don't know why, but I just, I just hate it. I can't be the only one that thinks this looks kind of ridiculous and ruins the game. It's not that I hate fairies, by the way, but I was just wanting to play the game as myself. I wanted to express myself through my character. I wanted to show who I was. And a lot of RPG games let you do that by letting yourself choose between different species. You can choose the hair, the styles, and even in Cyberpunk, you get to decide how big your c**k is. So there's tons and tons of customization for you to express who you are and who you want to be. So so while I have nothing against fairies, an MMO where you can only be a fairy just isn't my style. So why is Zenith making everyone have fairy wings. Why Why aren't they letting people be different types of species, different types of characters? Why is everyone a fairy, basically? Well, at one point, I was talking in the Discord to some people, and one of the devs jumped in the conversation and explained that the wings are how you fly around, and that the game essentially uses a Pop 1 style climbing and flying mechanism, and that the wings are what makes this happen. They literally, by the way, I'm, just, I'm not saying that I'm not comparing it to Pop 1 myself, they literally call it Pop 1 style climbing and flying. And there's two things about this 
this that I really don't like. Number one, why are they just ripping off of Population 1? I won't lie, I think being able to climb and fly around is awesome as a core gameplay mechanic, but in this game, it is very obvious that they added this feature as an afterthought because they saw how popular it was in Pop 1. Again, if it was a core gameplay mechanic, I think it would be really awesome, but in Zenith, it is not an essential gameplay mechanic that you need to use all of the time like in Population 1. Literally during the whole week of playing the alpha, there wasn't a single time where I needed to use the flying feature to get anywhere, unless I wanted to break the game and skip over large swaths of enemies to explore places I shouldn't be able to get to as a low level player, then I really didn't need to climb anywhere. I mean, yes, there I did have a ladder that I needed to climb, and being able to glide makes it quicker to get down large structures and get around places, but it was a very non-essential gameplay aspect. If you're gonna have it, you should use it, make it absolutely necessary. In Pop 1, you fly around to avoid people and climb to sneak up on them, and it is amazing madness just climbing and flying around everywhere. In Zenith, there isn't a single use for climbing and flying when you're fighting enemies, unless you want to climb up onto a structure so that an enemy can't hit you, and then you can just spam them with your magic or whatever. Maybe there's a quest, I think, where you have to climb up things to get like little statues, you have to find little statues, but is that seriously the best the devs could come up with? I mean, I know this is an alpha, but I mean, come on. I know they plan on adding some other features where you have to like hunt for food, for example, and you'll need to climb up a tree, so I don't think they should get rid of the climbing and flying feature, I just think they need to make better use of it as a core gameplay mechanic, instead of just having it there, because literally, like literally the devils tell me, they, they, they played Pop 1, they saw how popular it was, they liked how cool it was, so they just decided, you know what? We're gonna throw that same mechanic in here so that everyone loves our game too. It, it just, it, I just don't like that. I just don't like the logic behind that. Second, if you are going to have a pop one movement system, why does it have to be with fairy wings? You could have easily just made it like a spell that you do when you reach your hand out and then you glide. And then instead of having a stamina bar for flying, you, flying could be part of the magic bar. If you did this, you could just add a really simple spell animation when you stick your hand out to glide and that's it. No need to make everyone a fairy just to have the flying mechanic that was thrown in as an afterthought. I don't know if I'm just being crazy here, so let me know down in the comments what you think about these fairy wings. Is it really that big of a deal? Because honestly, to me, it's kind of a deal breaker. Like I said, I want to go into the game to socialize with friends while I grind some levels, and frankly, I don't want to look at my friends and see a ridiculous looking avatar with a ridiculous set of fairy wings on their back. It just isn't the first place I'd choose to hang out with my friends. And don't get me started on the outfits and hand shapes and everything else about the avatars. I mean, I'm trying to be lenient here because again, it is an alpha, so I expect those things to improve significantly before launch, but seriously, it needs a lot of work. Outside of that, there are some core gameplay issues that bother me that I really hope will get fixed before the release of the game. For example, the location on your body where you store your weapons is really annoying. Instead of storing weapons on your belt or on your back, they float on orbs in front of you. They sit in your view, in front of you, where you can't look anywhere without looking at them, and it is really obnoxious. Just put the weapons lower down on your waist so that you don't have to look at them, or even put them on your back. You don't have to look at your weapons the whole time, you just need to pull them out over your shoulder to use them. I don't know why they did this. It is standard practice for VR games to have a place to put items and weapons on your waist or on your back or even in an inventory wheel where you that you can open with your hand like in Half-Life Alex or Pop 1. Heck, even some games have you pull out a backpack that has your inventory weapons inside of it and I think that's really cool and immersive. With all of these options, I'm not sure why they're opting to put weapons on floating orbs in front of you. This could just be because it's an early release of the game, but honestly, how hard is it to just put these orbs lower down so that they're on your waist? Like, I, I don't understand. I'm not a game developer, so if you're a game developer, maybe let me know, but I think it would be just as easy to put them floating in front of you as it would be to put them down on your waist. Like, I just, I don't get it. All of my other issues with the game are related to bugs and things that I'm sure will get fixed before the game has a full release. For example, enemies have been doing damage to you even though they're nowhere close to you, but again, that's just a bug that I'm sure will get fixed before the full release. I want to work with the company to help promote their game and even give them my thoughts on it because I really want to see this game succeed. I applied for their partnered content creator thingy and I haven't heard anything from them, so I doubt they'll accept me into their exclusive content creator club, which is which is fine. That just means I'm free to criticize the game as much as I want if it doesn't shape up. The game overall, outside of the aesthetic issues mentioned above, is really good, I think. The magic system is a ton of fun, despite the obvious bugs that it has right now, and they found a way to use melee like sword slashing in a way that makes it so it's not just a hack and slash where you wave your hand around. They've made it so you actually have to put some effort in. 
I'm still looking forward to the game's release, but now I'm looking forward to it with much lower expectations, which is probably a good thing. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the whole reason that they're doing the alpha is to lower expectations a bit, because people are insanely excited about this game. But we gotta remember, it's a small indie dev team. We gotta give them a little bit of patience. In the meantime, I'm going to keep getting my fantasy itch satisfied with Demio. Let me know down in the comments any other fantasy RPG VR games that you know of that I can try. I'm really into this genre right now, so anything you can send me, I'd love to try out. Also, I want to thank my YouTube members who I lovingly call Trash Pandas. You all are awesome, and if you want to support the channel, hit the join button down below or check out my Patreon here. It's you guys that make this channel possible, so thank you. But that's it. I'm out.